first things first, what we're going to do is going to go to view and open explorer and properties. They should appear right here. You don't need to do this if you already have them open, of course. Then we'll go over to start GUI, click on the plus, and then install screen GUI. We can rename and insert menu. Then once we have the screen GUI selected, click on ignore GUI inset. So that's true. So it should have a tick in the box. Then tick the box in reset and spawn so it isn't like that. Then you're done with the screen GUI. We click on the plus, go to frame, click on our new frame. We'll change the anchor point 2.5 on both of them. Scroll down, go to size. Open both of these so you should have like a little arrow right here. Click on the arrows until they're like pointing down. Change offset to zero on both X and Y. Then change scale to one and one on both of them. Then go to the position. What we'll do is we'll click on this and we'll do 0 0.50, 0 0.50. Then it should be 0 0.50, 0 0.50. And what we'll do is we'll change background transparency to 1 and make sure border size pixel is 0. Then we'll name this frame mainframe. Then we'll duplicate this mainframe by pressing Ctrl and D or right clicking on it and doing duplicate. And we'll drag this new mainframe inside of here and we'll change the background transparency to 0 0.5. Then you can go over here and drag it until you get this like little dot up here. We'll scale it down somewhere around this size. This is a really good size. We'll name this new frame buttons. And we'll duplicate the frame. And just move it up a little bit. And we'll change the size just a tiny bit. And sort of a rectangle shape. And then we'll move it up around this much. Then hold control or command and then select both of them. Then you can just drag them until like you have these little rulers that go to the center. Then we should have our position censored. Now they're in the center of the screen. We'll name this larger rectangular one, title. We'll change background transparency to zero. And we'll change the background color free to maybe 30, 30, 30. Then we'll add, click on the plus in title. And we'll add something called a UI corner. And click on the UI corner, go to corner radius in properties. Change offset to zero. Let's go somewhere around 0 0.1. That looks good. Now click on the plus in title and add a text label. Then do the exact same thing that we did with the mainframe. We'll do background transparency 1, echo point 0.5, position 0 0.50, 0 0.50, and then the size 1010. Pretty simple to follow along. If you forget everything, just pause the video and then just put in these positions right there. Then scroll down. Change the text color to white or just keep it as it is if you have a brighter color. I don't have a brighter color, so. Then we'll select text scaled. You can change the font if you want to. I'll change it to Montserrat. And we could just put in game name. I'll change the weight of it to something like the eyeballed. There we go. So now as you can see, the text fills in the entire frame. But if we go over here, you don't have to do this, I'm just showing an example. If we go to like the iPhone 14 Pro, for example, the text is a bit too big. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to switch to this. And I'll scale it down to around this size so it's the exact same size as what it would be like on 1080p which is what we want i've left the size on the screen if you want to copy it then we'll duplicate the title and put it into our buttons then we'll scale it so it fills in around like the x position of the box we'll move it to the top make sure your x position is 0 0.5 but your y position is like that I let the size and position values on the screen. I'm going to scale this down just a tiny bit, around this much, this should be good. And we'll duplicate it, put this one into the center, duplicate it again, and then put one at the bottom. And it should look like this. Now if it looks like this, good, that's exactly what we need. So I'm going to go into here, change the UI corner to around 0 0.25 instead of 0 0.5, sorry 0 0.1, and I'll scale the buttons down a tiny bit and I'll position them to the center again. There we go. Then we can click on the buttons and change the background transparency to 1. And then, as you can see, we have the buttons, but the texts are a little bit small, so we'll scale the text up a tiny, tiny bit. That's a good enough size for me. 
I'm going to duplicate the text and put them into the other ones. The top one, this can be our play one, so I'll name this play. This middle one, we can call this the settings. And the bottom one, we can do credits. Then we'll select the text label for the top one, which is play. You can double click on the text to edit it like this. Or, when we'll go to settings, we'll scroll down these properties and change the text to R right here. You can do either way. I personally use the text uh, property. And now we just have something that looks like this. Looks pretty good so far. Now what we're gonna do is, just so we can like place this a little bit early, what we're gonna do is we're gonna position our camera into like where the menu should be. So, like my camera will be positioned like this when we're in the main menu. This is what I want it to look like. So what we'll do is we'll go to view and make sure you have command bar open. It should be like a little bar at the bottom. And it's in view right there on the second row. Then what we'll do is, we'll click on the uh, command bar right here so we can type something in and just follow along and type this in. I've left this in the pinned comment if you want to copy and paste it down. Then once you have this put in, we're going to select the box and then we're going to press enter. And now we should have a new part created right here. If you didn't, and if you don't want to put that command in, you could just put a, put in a part and then just rename it to menu camera parts. It's that simple. Thank you, but you'll have to reposition the part because it'll look something like this. So make sure you reposition the part as well. I just use it that way because then it's easier to position the part to where I want it to be. So now we'll click on this part, go into properties, change the anchor to true, can it to false, and make the transparency one. Then what we're going to do is we're going to group this as a model and then we're going to group it as a folder. Then, inside this folder, we'll name this menu folder. Open up the folder, and we'll change model to menu camera. Now, the reason I did a model is because some new games have something called streaming enabled. If you go into click on workspace and scroll down, this is streaming. So basically, it's making things a bit, you know, it's making things perform, but it's kind of like LOD, if you know what LOD is. So we'll go to behavior model streaming mode. We're going to change this to persistent. So like, this is a problem that many people had on the old tutorial, like, if the part was all the way over here, so like it's far away from the player, this isn't going to be loaded in. If we change it to persistent, it's going to be able to be loaded in wherever it is. It doesn't matter how far away it is, it's going to be loaded in. Now what we're going to do is we're going to insert a local script inside of the screen GUI, and we'll name this camera script. Then for this camera script, just follow along. So it should look a little something like this. Now, just before we go ahead and try and do some playtesting, if it doesn't load in, that might be because the folder didn't load in. So, if that doesn't work, just drag the model into workspace, go into the camera script, and then all you have to do is just remove the menu folder. Just so it looks like that. But I'm going to keep the menu folder since, well, it looks a bit nicer. Now what we're going to do is we're going to make our button animations. So insert a new local script inside of our buttons frame. And then we'll name this button script. Then what we can do is we'll do this. Just follow along. So now the script looks something like this. So I'll zoom in right here so you can go ahead and copy it. Now, once you copied it, we'll go over here. Now I just want to explain something real quick. So if you imagine you have like a, a colored play button, so like the play button is like green, for example. We have a green play button. When I hover over this play button, instead of going to like a lighter green, say like this type of green, it won't do that. Instead, if we go into here, as you can see, it changes to the color 40, 40, 40. And if you see here, the color here is 152, 255, 108. And this will be the color when the mouse stops hovering. So it should go to this. And so if we put it here, here, when we when the mouse leaves the button, it will go to this value. And if we do here, when the mouse enters it, we can put in a brighter value. If the mouse enters, it will go to this brighter value. When the mouse leaves, it will go to this darker value. But if it's like this, then it's going to be 30, 30, 30, which is the color. So 
the normal color. If we go 30, 30, 30, it's the default color. So just a quick note. So now that if we've done that, I'm going to mark this as the anim animation script. Now what we'll do is we can go ahead and do a quick play test. So while I'm playing, as you can see, I'm in the game and we have our button animations. So that is working. If I go ahead and check the output, there is no errors. If you don't know where output is, you're going to need to use output. If you want me to help you in the comment section or in my Discord server, you go over to view, go to the second row, and it should be just output right there. Then go over here, and it should appear like something red. And it will, if you click, if you click on it, it will send you like a line in your script where the error is. So it will tell you where what the error is. It'll tell you what's wrong. So pretty useful. If you don't know where output is, you should. So now what we're going to do is we're going to make our pop-ups. What I'll do is I will duplicate the buttons. I'll change the background transparency to 0 0.5. Then we'll drag the white frame up a little bit. We'll scale it up to around this size. This is a good enough size. We'll center it. So the position will be 0 0.5, 0, 0 0.5, 0. Now it is centered. We'll change the background transparency to 1. Then, oh, sorry. Don't change the background transparency. Um, we'll remove credits and settings, and we'll just have the play button. We'll go into size. We'll change the Y, y of play. We'll change the position of play to 0 0.5, 0, 0 0.5, 0. Right there, suddenly centered. And I'll change the UI corner here to something like 0 0.05. We'll change to 0 0.05. We'll, change, we'll move the text label up right here. And we'll move it to the top. We'll name this new frame that we have. We'll name this uh, pop-ups. And then we'll name the play button frame, which we have right now. We'll name this settings. And what we can do is we can click on this text label and we can edit the text. I'll name this settings. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select buttons and title. I'm going to scroll down and click visible. So that uh, it's not visible, we can edit these. What I'm going to do is, I'm going to duplicate the play button from the buttons and put it into our new button right here. I'm going to change the background color free to 40, 40, 40. Then I'm going to move the play button down to somewhere like here. Put it right there. And then we're going to rename this to just back. So this is not going to be on back button. So like we can go back to the main menu and go out of the pop off. There we go. I'm going to change the UI corner on that as well. Make it look a bit nicer. And there we go. There's our pop-up so far. We're going to add a setting real quick. So I'm going to gonna duplicate the back right here. I'm going to move it over here. Then we have this. I'm going to rename this Shadows. I'm going to duplicate this text label. So I'm going to move this up a little bit. Duplicate it. Move it down. I'm going to scale this down and then center it. Looks something like that. I'll change this to shadows. And I'll rename the other text label to state. And then we'll set the text to just on because the shadows are currently on. Now what we're going to do is we're going to click on the plus in shadows, insert a new text button. And we're going to change background transparency to one. Change the text to nothing, so change the text to nothing, just put a backspace in the properties, or just, just put a space bar, or any works. Then change the size, 1010, zero, one, zero. position, number 0 0.5, 0, 0.50, and the anchor point, 2.5. Then, what we'll do is we'll click on the plus in shadows, and we'll insert a new bold value. And then we'll name this value, date value. Then we can copy this text button actually and put it into all of our other buttons like play, settings, credits, and the back button. Select, button. select all of them and do Control, Shift, and V. Or you can right click and then just do paste and do. And we'll click on the state value and change the value to true. Then we'll insert a new local script. Then just follow along. And then we go, there is our shadow script. It should look something like this. So, go ahead and copy it down. I'll zoom in a little bit more. There you go. Copy it. And you're done. Now what we can do is we can click on the settings. Duplicate it. Duplicate it. And then change the name to credits. 
click on the other settings uh, frame right here and we'll change the position uh you see this one right here with the so we have like squiggly brackets just like the one with the second one go to 0 0.5 change the 0 to a 1 on 0 0.5 so it should be 1.5 then it should like go down a little bit now click on pop-ups scroll down and go to behavior and then clips descendants set this to true and then it should no longer be visible and then we'll click on the settings frame visible should be false then we'll go to our new credits frame we can remove the shadows and then we'll change the text to credits then what i'll do is i'll duplicate the credits text right here it's going to down a little bit and i'll change this to my username and we can duplicate it again and we can put in the stuff that this user has done so like if you have multiple users select both of them duplicate 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 if you have more than this amount, of, this amount of people, which I don't think you will have, then just put in a scrolling frame and then put all the text in there. So I'll put in my work here, which is made this main menu GUI. Pretty simple. Then we'll click on the credits. Position, we'll change this to 1, 0 0.50, 1.50. It's visible, false. Pop-ups, we'll change the background transparency to 1. Then we'll just click on title and buttons and set visible to true then we're back here we can close our pop-ups and we can have this we'll click on the button script then we'll add a new section we'll name this buttons script then just go ahead and follow along and i will add a little checkpoint in the middle so we can catch up on a few things so let's go So we're at the first checkpoint here, it should look like something like this. So what we're going to do at this checkpoint, we're going to click on buttons frame, go down and go to position. We're going to copy this position, make two new comments, so we'll name this buttons position. And we'll make another comment right here, click on title, copy that position, and then we'll do title position. Then we can go ahead and continue making this GUI, so follow along. So here we go, this is the current script, and if you, I've made a tiny little change. I've changed local pop-up pop -up to pop-up frame, because we do have an, another instance named pop-up, so I don't want to get you confused, because like we have a capital P right here, and I had a lowercase p right here. So I named it to pop-up frame, so anything that was like lowercase pop-up should be named pop-up frame. That's the only notable change. Now what we're going to do is, I'm going to script our back button, so we'll open up our pop-ups. We can remove the, actually, we, we, let's remove this button script right here. That's not supposed to be in there. <laughs> we'll go to the back button, click on the plus, and then insert a local script. Then, we'll go back into our button script, and then we'll zoom out a little bit. We'll copy the tech twin service right here. Paste that there. We'll get our 24 for the pop-ups here. And what we'll do is, we'll just copy this right here as well. And what we'll do is, we'll do scripts.parent.textfun.must one one click, colon connect, set a function, and just follow along. So, little quick checkpoint. Right here, it should look something like this. So we'll go into our button script, and let's copy the positions that we have right here. Put them into this script right here. So as you can see, this is the buttons position. So this position should go right here in the buttons tween. We'll go to the title position, we'll copy this, and we'll put it right here. Then it should look something like this, and now we can get rid of those positions as we do not need them anymore. continue following along
So it did make a little bit of an error here, but it's a quick fix, so don't playtest yet. We'll go over to here, go to pop-up, and change this right here to frame name. I, I, <laughs> I don't know how I messed up that, but make sure you change that to frame name. Now we can go ahead and playtest. So we're inside the game, we have play, settings and credits. Play one doesn't work here because we haven't scripted it. So if you click on settings, our settings pop-up does show. You can click on on, off, off, on, off, on. That does work. Click the back button. It turns down. Click on credits. We have the credits right here. Click on the back button. It goes back to the main menu. Now let's go ahead and make our play button. And what we're going to do is we're going to click on the mainframe. We're going to duplicate it. We're going to remove everything inside this mainframe. We're going to click on the mainframe. We're going to rename it to transition. We're going to change background transparency to zero. Background color free. We'll change this to maybe maybe 10 10 10 or 12 12 12 if it doesn't want me to do 10 10 10 and we'll change the anchor point from 0 0.5 0 0.5 to 0.5 um 0 0.5 0 0 0.5 looks something like that i always mess it up <laughs> now we go to position change x to 1 and make sure your border size pixel is 0 otherwise you're going to see like a little border on the end like that don't want that so it should look like that. Now we're gonna head to go ahead and switch the play button. So we'll go back to the button script and then we'll add a new section. We'll name it uh, play script. So go ahead and just follow along. So now our play script should look something like this. I'm going to zoom a tiny bit more, so go ahead and copy this down and put it into your button script. Once you've done that, make sure you pause the video so because I'm going to move on now. So once you've done that, go over here and, well, let's go ahead and playtest. So over here, we're going to click on settings, just check it out. That always do turn on and off, click back, the credits, we have me right here, we'll click play. And our transition transitions and our camera gets reset back here and if i go ahead and check our menu gui gets removed from our ui so we if i try and reset then we won't just go back to the main menu because well we're out of it now you can always just change if you want to just enable reset on spawn on the screen gui so like i'll just example reset on spawn that is true and there we go that is my Really quick and simple tutorial on how to make a sort of advanced but good looking main menu GY for literally you, a beginner, if you are a beginner, if you're an experienced user of Roblox Studio, I have no idea why you're here, but hello, yes, thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you next main menu tutorial, which will probably be our next year knowing me, yeah, thank you for watching, I'll see you next time.